guys, I'm excited. We are going riding. Looks like we're gonna get one more ride in this year before everything gets super cold. Um, gonna head out this weekend tomorrow. Uh, we think it's gonna be 50 degrees or so, cloudy, so a little bit cooler. So we're gonna try and bring some hot cocoa, some hot cider. Actually gonna try and cook some hot pockets on the motors, see if that can keep everybody warm. But we're going down to a friend of mine's place out in the, uh, the Croydon, Newport, New Hampshire area and hit some trails we've never been on. We're expecting some mud. I think we're rolling, I don't know, boy, we'll see tomorrow. But we might have seven or eight ATVs, three families. Should be a lot of fun. Just hoping, hoping the weather holds out. So today I got to get everything pulled together this evening and uh, yeah, up on the, up on the truck because I'm going to head down to the farm to grab the trailer and then we'll pull the trailer you know, up to our riding destination. So a little bit of ground to cover, but you know, it's, it's part of the fun. Kind of nice, the bottom of the, uh, the steering stem sits right in, right in my jack. I have lubed everything in preparation for the ride. We're gonna take both tires off so we can get at the drums here, replace the pads. You see that these adjusters, this one is just about all the way up. Same on the other side. And up on the handlebar, it's also fed all the way out. So these pads, I expect them to be worn. I think we've been riding these pads uh, two years or so at this point. Let's let all the tension off. And tension off down here. I'll thread these all the way down to the end. I'll thread these down. And we'll end up setting these once we have the new pads in. It's nice to do them both at the same time because of the Y harness. You want everything to pull even. If you tighten one more than the other, then that Y harness pulls at an angle and it just really goofs up the wear on the pads and the effectiveness of the brakes. You may only have one wheel grabbing. All right, I gotta grab a tool, pull out the cotter pin here. And I keep a packet of spare cotter pins because I go through these things. comes our castle nut. And there's a washer on there, but there we go. This hub's not gonna fight me, it's gonna come off. Yeah, look at that. So we're also gonna pack grease in and around these bearings here. There's, there's been water in here, obviously. If you've seen some of our rides, like the Mike of Mine ride, these things get wet. That's gonna need some love. So here's the first set of pads. Really, there's not a whole lot there. Everything's clean and operational, but there's just nothing. There's really nothing left there. So I'll end up pulling this off, comparing to the new one, and you'll see. But let's move over to the other side, get the other side off. Now for reference, I think we've been riding this. Oh boy. I did replace these brakes when I picked this up. Oh boy, I picked this up before we moved to Boston. So these brakes, ah boy, six years, six years on these pads. And it got a lot of riding this year. So let's see how this hub is gonna play for us. Oh, it might be a little tougher. One of the risk points is if you go too long, the pads wear down, starts to wear into the hub, and then you have to replace the whole, the whole piece. You can feel that on the, I don't know if you can hear that, but even the bearings are a little, a little wackadoodle on this one. I'm gonna get a persuader. Okay, it's coming. It's always 
tough if you try to get in here with a flat head to kind of pry this off. This is really die cast and you start chipping off the hub. You also don't want to smash too hard on the, on the actual ears here, the lobes. Glad I'm, glad I'm doing these. Looking down in this hub, there's there's a lip that's worn in there. I mean, this is 1988, so we're gonna get a steel brush. We're gonna clean this up, hit it with a little bit of sandpaper, brush all this. We're gonna repack this with grease. It's not ideal. It'll extend the life of these bearings. But uh, if you listen closely, I, I can hear, I can hear the bearings in there. All right, let's pop off. There we go, nice and easy. We're gonna reuse these springs. They look fine and typically the kits don't come with springs. All right, let me compare these pads to a new pad. Boy, it's just, there's nothing to grab. All right, I'm pleasantly surprised. This kit has new springs. Considering it has new springs, we're going to use them. So it's a cheap pad. It's not a racing pad. There's no you know vents down through here. It's the same pads that I use on my blaster, my 88 to 02 blaster, my first gen. Yeah, I guess it is hard to make the comparison on there. And you see how much pad is on here and how much is on here. These pads actually look like they have life in them, but that they are just caked. Let's clean all this up. You can see on the back here, this little lobe. This is what keeps the, the rest of the housing from spinning. You get that just right, clicks right on there. So that all, that all stays. So I'm actually going to take this piece off here. I'm going to put it through the ultrasonic cleaner to get this off. Right up under here, there's a little E-clip really can't see it I've got it most of the way off take off that e-clip I can lift this out this whole housing can come out I want to free up this whole mechanism here because this is the brake you know return and it's pretty stiff all right there's one just able to pull up and get the cable out through here interesting I never noticed this before but that looks to be a, a brake pad wear indicator that mark there and once this is all cleaned up I wonder what that'll look like so I'm gonna grab the other side We'll stick these in the ultrasonic for 20 minutes. I can take the spring off by slipping this little cut washer. <clears throat> I want to get the spring down because I want to make sure that I have this rubber boot up there to protect all of that. I'll leave this off, make it easier to put all of this back on, get that E-clip in there without fighting the spring when I'm done. Oh look, you can kind of see that it looks like there is a wear indicator. Yeah. Look at that. All right, we'll go clean this up. So I've cleaned up this hub. Wire, brisk wheel in here and sandpaper. You can still see those ridges this hub you know it's it's fairly worn so i'm smoothing it out as best i can because this is more than 30 years old it's going to work a whole lot better but typically that ridging less than ideal I'll keep cleaning it up a little bit and we'll put it back together all right this side's come out of the ultrasonic 20 minutes pretty good you know it's a little dirt here that I could have scraped better. Definitely a nice wear bar adjustment. I'll have to pay attention to that in the future. And did a pretty good job. This is a little big for that ultrasonic, but uh, yeah, 
Got a lot of the heavy grime off. A little bit's tucked in there. I'm, I'm going to go with it though. This is, this is going to be fine for what we're looking to do. So we'll start putting this back together. I did put a little bit of uh, grease on the axle. I use a marine corrosion control grease. Water based. Same stuff I use to pack the uh, bearings on my trailers. Well, there's the fun. The rubber boot won't fit through the orifice here. So slip that down. Slip my cable in. And then I'm going to get my boot on. Get my E clip back on. Turn the axle so you can see a little bit here. Feed the big spring back up. Hold it back. Hold it back as best I can there. So I can get this guy over the cable. Sits down. Ta-da. I did put a little bit of that corrosion, anti-corrosion grease on the threads here to make my life a little easier when I get there. And we have our other spring. And this block. Set down in and I'm just going to get this guy just, just so it pokes on the bottom there. I want to call this out because I called attention to it earlier but this is the Y harness and if you can see in there right now it's at an angle if I give this cable a pull now it's sitting level once we have the brakes on and the wheels on we start adjusting for tuning when we pull the brakes up top we're watching for this to pull level if it pulls off at an angle like for example if the right hand side was lower left hand side was higher we're going to want to tighten this cable up by tightening down here and loosen the right one up by loosening this down here so that we get these pulling even once we have them pulling even we'll take up any leftover slack up here at the handlebar now to put these on i'm going to make a v and i can get it to slip on without pinching my fingers too badly Oop. look at that today today i didn't get it in the first try all right try two make it into a v get it on two there we go and on the back you can see down below here now interesting this is, this is going to be fine. You see it's not perfectly lined up. It's actually expanding it just a little bit. But this is plenty at the neutral position for these, not the, you know, the pads, not the catch and the drum. And we are all the way extended down here. So this is as far down as it can go. So from here, you see I have been packing the bearings with grease. Cleaned everything up in here as best I could. I used, a, you know... Hand sanded with 100 grit inside here, and then air blast everything out. So we're as clean as we're going to get, so I'm going to put it back on. Real tight. Might actually be too tight. Make sure this is actually pulled all the way down. I'm actually going to thread it. I was at the bottom, but I want I want to get this bar down okay now on the bottom I really do have it parallel there's no no pad expansion now Let's see if this will slip on there it is look at that you can even hear just that touch of drag that's going to be good. Now, so that doesn't fall off. We don't want to set this now. We want to wait until we have um, at least the other side done so we can do these in parallel. But for now, I can get my washer 
and my castle nut back on and I can reuse this cotter pin today okay before we put the wheels on let's go up to the handbrake pull the handbrake see how it does for locking things up and I'm looking in the middle here for the pull so if you can see that see that crazy angle there that's what we've got to adjust out so everything pulls the same so we're spinning we're spinning up here we're actually gonna start because I like to have this adjustment handy for on the trail I'm gonna start down here we're gonna go just until we get drag and this one's gonna be a little funny because that bearing is not great we're gonna start with the bottom being flush now on this side same thing we're gonna start There it is. We're going to call that neutral. And everything is really sitting pretty well down up there. If I come up here, yank on my brake, look how uneven that is in there. My left side's way up. Also, if I put the camera down, I'm going to try and spin these hubs. Grabbing the brake. Not a real solid grab here. Not a real solid grab there, but looking up here, completely uneven. I need to balance out. So it's kind of as though this cable on the left is longer than the other one or is stretched. So that's a half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three turns. Try this again. Pull better, still high on the left. Now still. We have more tightening to do. Bring the tension off. Everything's back down. Really want to take up that little slack there. Frankly, on both sides, we want to take up that slack. That's pulling almost even. One, two, three, four. I'm going to say five turns there. Everything's down. It's neutral position. Pull the lever all the way. We're really pulling even. That one's getting good. Not so much. So we want to match them. Which is to say, I think we're going to start one, two, three, four. So that's two turns on there. Everything still spins. Grab it. Pretty good. Still wants to break out. How's my pull? Pull is still pretty even. One, two, three, four. Still have neutral. All right. And again, it's hard to see with the camera, but the Y is pulling even. I really got that one that locked up at the hub. Now it's going to feel different when I get the wheels on. This one's still a little loose. All right, so, but I'm happy now that we're pulling even in the middle. The order of operations is get it so everything is pulling evenly. And once I have the cables lifting evenly, then I adjust so that they're both grabbing at the same point, which is to say, tighten it till it drags. And then I came off one full turn. So, you know, each one's a half. So one, two. That's just how I've done it, focusing on getting a, a, a even pull on the cable. I suppose I could go at adjusting these for neutral first and it should have the same effect. Take up the slack in the cable, take up the slack in the cable. If the slack is all gone, it should pull the same. And again, just the way I've done it, it's in reverse.
I'm going to put the wheels back on now so I can actually spin and see how well they lock up and I'll do my final adjustment up top. So now any adjustment I want, I can do up here. A lot of good pull in those brakes now. All right, uh, that's it. So uh, having done this one since the Mica Mine ride, I've now done new rear brakes. They were really worn. I noticed the other day that, you know, the foot pedal, you, you got four or five inches before it would grab. It didn't want to go any further. So nice and tight rear brakes, new, you know, pads all done, worm gear greased up. Front now, new pads cleaned up in the, the ultrasonic, greased. I can see I'm going to have some work to do down the road because uh, the bearings in here, you know, they're starting to wear out. You know, there, there's always something, but we have brakes. Also, SC1'd it. And the plastics look nice with the SC1. The other thing that we did, the fairing here, was, there was no fairing stay. So I got a fairing stay off of eBay for this one. Uh, bolted it right in to hold the fairing off because the bottom would get caught in the tires and that's why if you've seen some of the videos we had a rope or a bungee cord holding it back i do have the rest of the rubber going down here i haven't put that on we may not put it on but for now i think we're ready to get out and ride again i'll say one more thing this uh these brakes really the same thing as the the 200 cc moto fours the two 1986 ones that we have this is a 1988 225 cc um we also have a 350 cc uh a uh, yfm 350 erw model same process for the front uh brakes on all of those models uh same pads on all of them as well so uh if if you're stumbling across i'm finding a lot of parts interchangeable across these 80s models so now I gotta get things cleaned up. We're gonna get packed up and uh, we're gonna go riding tomorrow. I'm kind of excited.